there's a Republican state legislator in Washington who was just exposed. And he was exposed as the textbook definition of a terrorist. So you don't believe me? Well, uh, prepare yourself here. Washington State Representative Matt Shea, a Republican, participated in an act of domestic terrorism when he took part in the armed Bundy militia takeover of the Oregon uh, Malhauer National Wildlife Refuge in 2016, according to a report issued by the Washington State House and referred to the FBI. The 108-page report said that Shea began working with militia leader Eamon Bundy in November 2015 on the planning and preparation of the six-week takeover, which saw dozens of armed supporters descend on the rural uh, refuge in remote eastern Oregon. The standoff ended with dozens of arrests and the fatal FBI shooting of militia member Robert Lavoy Finicum, who was killed while trying to evade authorities. Shea created a military-style plan for the takeover and used his status as a lawmaker to meet with law enforcement as he gathered intelligence before meeting with Bundy and the armed protesters, according to the report. Two other Republicans, former State Representative Graham Hunt and former GOP Lands Commissioner nominee Steve McLaughlin, were also part of the planning, the planning of the occupation, the report said. Shea had claimed to a House ethics investigator that he merely traveled to the refuge on a fact-finding mission, but after the refuge ended and Finnicum was shot, Shea wrote on Facebook, and I quote, After much prayer, I'm afraid violence might be necessary to take our country back. The report said that Shea, who was elected in 2008 and hosts a weekly show on the American Christian Network, was also involved in the standoff with FBI agents at the Bundy Ranch in Nevada in 2014 and multiple other armed conflicts. Shea was associated with multiple armed militias and used his prominence to promote armed conflicts against authorities, the report said, detailing that Representative Shea, as a leader in the Patriot Movement, planned, engaged in, and prom promoted a total of three armed conflicts of political violence against the United States government in three states outside the state of Washington over a three-year period. In one conflict, Representative Shea led covert strategic pre-planning in advance of the conflict. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Wow, man. Holy crap. Holy crap. So, he spoke about this, and he went on InfoWars, a very, you know, that's probably the kindest outlet to him given these facts now. They're the only people who are going to be, like, super kind to him. Um, Shea called the investigation, the state's investigation into him, a, quote, Marxist smear campaign. Come on, man. And, quote, political warfare according to a Maoist insurgency model. <laughs> I'm willing to bet that the people who, some of the people who did this investigation into Shea, don't even know anything about Mao. And he's saying it's a Maoist insurgency model. Come on, man. Well, I mean, what a what a weak response that is. Now, he's also, like, quite literally advocated for war against enemies of Christianity. And he's pro-theocracy. Which, by the way, I also find hilarious, the contradiction at the heart of his beliefs. Because he's, he, you know, he's messing around with all these, like literal domestic terror anti-government organizations, these far-right groups that are probably sympathetic to, like, a sovereign citizens-like ideology, which is the idea that, like, the sheriff is the highest authority and they're, you know, the federal government basically doesn't exist and isn't legitimate and all that stuff. But he's got these anti-government extremist views, but then also he's pro-theocracy. And, you know, as I'm sure many of you know, theocracy requires massive government. It requires a giant government. It requires a government that gets in every little nook and cranny of your social life and your private life. So which is it? Do you want a big government theocracy or do you want like basically no federal government at all and like a very tiny government that's just, you know, totally hands off libertarian type paradise where the sheriff is the highest command. There's no regulation of very few laws and whatnot. <laughs> so there's a massive contradiction there. But listen, the main point here to take away, and this is the 
first thing that popped into my mind is, could you imagine for a second, we have to do the old switcheroo test here, because it really is telling. Oh, and also he's refusing to resign. He's saying, no, I'm not going to resign, and this is a witch hunt, and I'm staying. So, see, Trump, it looks like Republicans have learned the lesson of the Trump era, which is, you could throw out the old playbook. There is no rule book that's like, that's set in stone as to how politics works. No, you could override anything, really. So, um, but he's refusing to step down, but could you imagine for a second, just flip the, the terror organization. Imagine you have somebody who's in the government, who was quite literally part of Al-Qaeda or the Taliban. Or you, you know what? Don't even go that far. Don't even go that far. Just go Muslim Brotherhood. We'd never hear the end of it. I mean, you have Republicans who accuse people wrongly of being in the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, obviously, they said that about Obama. Oh, he's a Marxist and he's the Muslim Brotherhood. Ridiculous! Over-the-top absurd. But imagine we had evidence. We had proof that you had a Muslim legislator who, is, who was in the Muslim Brotherhood. There would be an outcry across the entire country. And everybody would be, you have to step down. What are you talking about? This is insane. Imagine we had, you know... I don't know, a Black Panther who had engaged in a racial act of terror in one way or another? Pretty sure there would be a larger outcry than this. But this guy, you know, good old, good old fashioned right wing Christian boy. And so, you know, he gets caught with all this stuff and he's just like, yeah, um, I'm not going anywhere. Hey, I like them apples. What? <laughs> You're not going anywhere. It, it's he's literally a domestic terrorist now working as a as a politician, and everybody's just kind of shrugging it off. Like, yeah, what are you gonna do? Now, you know, he didn't actually kill anybody, um, but he did partake in, you know, the illegal um, takeover and occupation of a government building for a personal grievance that these people had over land with one of their friends, um, and he did, it's very possible he pointed his firearm at, uh, police officers, like in, uh, in the 2014 situation in Nevada with the standoff, there were a lot of these far right-wing militia guys who were literally, they had the cops in their scopes. Their snipers were pointed at them, and they didn't pull the trigger, thank God, but they were like overt terrorist threats. We're not going to listen to you. The guns are pointed at you, all that stuff. And it did come to a, a firefight or at least one of the one of the militia guys got killed. And in the wake of that guy getting killed, this guy came out and just said, no, it's time for us to do violence against law enforcement, which, of course, by the way, leads to the other massive um, piece of hypocrisy here, which is as a general rule, you have Republicans in the U.S. are very, very pro law enforcement, very pro cop. Um, I mean, now with the FBI, it's a different story, and the CIA, it's a different story, because those organizations, those agencies don't like Trump, and they like Trump more than those organizations, so they kind of flipped on the FBI and the CIA, at least temporarily, I'd say. Um, but they've never had an issue. With the cops, they've almost always taken the side of being pro-cop. But now you have somebody who very likely may have literally pointed a firearm at a cop, and he threatened to kill law enforcement and called for violence repeatedly... Now he's a politician, and my guess is if you turn on Fox News, there won't exactly be outrage over this story. But yeah, I mean, this is a, a far-right guy who was able to actually get himself some power, get an elected position, and, you know, you're just not going to hear much about this story. It's, it's going to be, you're going to hear it here, maybe you saw some articles about it, but you're not going to hear much about it on the nightly news or on CNN or MSNBC, definitely not on Fox News, even though in another situation, if it was like a black group that was hostile to police officers, you'd never hear the end of it. You'd never hear the end of it. They, they made a big stink about the new Black Panthers were like carrying weapons and on protecting a line for voting. And this was back during like the 08 election or some shit. And they went nuts. They went nuts. Here you have a situation where it's m way above and beyond that, where he may have literally pointed his gun at law enforcement and called for political violence against the government. And you're not going to hear any of it, again, for sheer ideological partisan reasons. But it is wild that he was just like, yeah, I cool, you got that investigation done. Anyway, um, it's a Marxist plot. It's a Maoist insurgency. And um, I don't care what you said. I'm staying. 
compare this to the fact that uh, Katie Hill was just thrown under the bus because she had some naughty pictures. Because she was into some kinky stuff behind the scenes. And Democratic leadership was like, Oh, you must go. Step down. And here you have a dude who's like, I, Yeah, I threatened to kill cops. <laughs> I was part of a literal uh, arm takeover of a government building. And you could piss off if you don't like it. Very bizarre state of affairs in American politics, to say the least. 